Hey, what's up Stream Keepers and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I actually wanted to share with you guys about breeding cycle. And why is this so important? So I've been, uh, you know, getting some questions around, you know, how often does stream breed? And, you know, why is you know, my stream not breeding? So I think that there is some, you know, science behind it and some data and information that I wish to share uh, in this video. So in this video, you know, we will start off with uh, the very, you know, high level uh, understanding of, you know, the, the, the breeding cycle of streams. So how does, you know, how does the stream actually uh, start breeding? So I think the, the very first thing that you need to be aware of is that the stream has to be saddled. And in order to get it to, you know, saddle, uh, which means that they are actually carrying the eggs um, that you will actually need to have at least you know the very fundamental uh, water parameters right you know there is sufficient uh, biofilms in the in the in the tank and then you know there is additional biofilm to actually cater for for the streamlets to actually uh, uh, consume so you know in the animal world um, you know this you know uh, streams they are actually very smart uh, there, there is always a, a built-in uh, so-called dna where they can actually understand you know uh, when they are supposed to breed and when they are not supposed to breed for example uh, if the tank is uh, overcrowded with a lot of streamlets uh, there is a tendency that uh, breeding cycle will actually stop or slow down by drastically and that is where you know mother nature actually kind of like cater to to this uh, aspect whereby you do not actually overpopulate the tank and the reason is because if you overpopulate the tank number one your nitrate level will shoot up the roof number two the probability of having you know sufficient food that is where there is concern so for example if the, your tank has a uh, 100 liter tank you only have uh, two male and 10 females uh, for example you are breeding them and then you probably will have maybe 50 or 80 streamlets in, in that 100 liter tank so there are you know, still sufficient food available to actually uh, to provide for for the streamlets and for the for the breeding you know the, the breeding colony to keep breeding however when it you know crosses the mark whereby there is too much uh, or too many streamlets you know that there will be a point where there's too many and then you know uh, the entire tank will reach its saturation point so when is the saturation point so uh, as a general thumb of rule a uh, rule of thumb uh, we actually um, for 100 liter we actually have about 100, 100 to 150 at best 150 so uh, after that you know you start to see uh, some issues for example uh, you will have some um, streamlets that do, they don't grow as fast as they can or they don't grow out big and things like that is you know if you are not going to remove them to uh, grow up tank so for example you're just going to leave them there you have one tank and you want to keep them and and you want to just see them um, probably you will reach a, a, a certain saturation point whereby you will not be able to see more and more streamlets actually uh, coming out from from the from the mothers and one of the reason is because the you know the the females they actually know that the streamlets i mean the streams they actually know that you know when is the saturation point that when there is uh, insufficient biofilm for for the next or their for their babies to actually uh, come out of this world to actually have have the uh, sufficient biofilm so i think another question has always uh, been surfaced is that if if for example if i have about 80 babies and in a in a 100 liter 100 liter tank will there be sufficient biofilm or sufficient food or do we need to actually enhance and add more you know more food to the to the tank so that you know the babies actually uh have have food so i think the fear is that uh, a lot of breeders are afraid that there will not be sufficient food for the babies um, and to actually produce or, or provide uh, additional source of food for the babies so i think uh, in a controlled manner i think that is still fine as long as you do not uh, clock up the or you do not actually uh, feed too much food that you know uh you know make the water a little bit more in balance or you have a lot of uh, higher nitrate so that you need to change more water the more water that you change you actually make the water fluctuation uh, or the water parameters not as stable as it should be uh, and i think that is uh something that uh from a husband tree or you know stream breeding uh process uh, that is the reason why one of the reasons is we remove them 
uh, you know, the, the streamlets will remove them from the breeding tank uh, into the grow up tank so that you know they can actually enjoy the space, the, the abundance of food. And do we actually add additional food for the grow up tank? Actually, we do not. So what we do is that we only you know provide the normal feed, the daily feed, and of course you know we have the calyx ball, uh, some mosses, some plants, and in there I think that's where they 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 really enjoy what they do. So now coming back, pulling back to that topic of the breeding cycle. So to get them to settle, what do they actually need? So they actually need a lot of biofilm, high protein biofilm. Uh, and that's one of the reasons when I share this information with a lot of these breeders, you know, local and overseas. Uh, on the Calyx ball, you can actually see that mostly they are females. And that is one tell telltale sign that they are actually females without even looking at them. Uh, and this observation is uh, can be seen because uh, the streams, the female streams are getting ready to get buried. So it means that they are actually consuming a lot more uh, protein, high protein, and of course the beneficial uh, biofilm, which is their natural food in the wild, um, to, to encourage them to settle. So once they settle, then, you know, uh, there is a chance that, you know, every month there's a molting, and then there's a chance that the, 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 the females will actually get buried. So, so that is, uh, that is the, that is how you know uh, we actually get them to settle and then bury. However, there is also another catch to this. It's not just so simple as getting settled, uh, you know, and and all that. So there may be times where you know it doesn't happen, right? So it means that you you will miss out one breeding cycle and then you have the next breeding cycle, and time is of an essence because breeding is a short period of time. The females once they are newly minted females where they can start to bury, they do not get. 30 eggs or 20 eggs uh, immediately. So usually they start off with you know maybe 8, 10 and then they slowly grow as they grow bigger and bigger in size they carry more and more eggs and then that is where you know uh, it's, it's, it's getting the peak. You know, once it, it reaches the peak point it starts to deteriorate uh, it gets older the frequency of breeding gets longer um, then you eventually they will stop breeding and that is you know the entire breeding cycle so the entire breeding cycle if you can actually you know uh, gain about eight to nine months of good breeding cycle meaning that uh, with rest in between of course eight to nine months that is quite a substantial amount or substantial substantial number of uh, streamlets i think that is where you actually want to to, to target uh, where you have the the, the females getting settled buried and then you know have the streamers and, and so on and so forth and the main reason is that if you're going to miss too many cycles it also means that you know there is no streamlets available and you really need to have streamlets to actually replace adults eventually or you're going to do some uh, crossback projects or some breeding projects selective breeding projects and that is how important actually you know uh, having the streams buried and settled and buried uh, and having uh, streamlets, I think that's that's critical, um, and and that's the the one of the main reason why you know we introduce uh, biofilm uh, for for the stream the female streams to actually you know consume so that they have sufficient energy to actually um, get ready to settle and and bury. And of course, you know, uh, depending on uh, air temperature, atmospheric pressure and temperature, um, depending on where you live, you know, uh, if you are living in the northern hemisphere during winter, of course, the, 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 the breeding cycle will slow down. Uh, however, it's also a good time to actually get them to grow bigger size, get them ready, get them settled ready for spring to come. So when spring comes, you know, they are you know, fully loaded, they will be out there breeding a lot. Of course, you know, you can, uh, you know, like for example, in Singapore, it is hot throughout the year. There is no winter, there is no summer. It's always hot or hotter. It's just hot. So what we do is that we have air condition. So in, in a, another sense that if you are in the winter and if you have your temperature around 20 to 25 degrees, you know, Celsius, uh, definitely, you know, you can actually try to control the temperature and atmosphere. Uh, so atmospheric pressure, that is something that uh, we are still uh, looking into. Um, there is some... A correlation between atmospheric pressure and of course molting um, so that is something that we are still studying upon uh, researching upon uh, and it's also very uh, a, a topic that is very interesting to, to learn because um, if you are able to actually get them to molt 
you know, uh, knowing when they will mold. You can actually selectively breed them uh, based on when you want to, them to breed and you know, the, the number of the duration that they carry, the, the eggs and so on and so forth. You can actually time uh, most of it and you can really uh, see through, uh, I mean, you can actually record down a lot of this information uh, as you breed them. So uh, at the very final part of it, you know, having this calyx ball, you know, uh, once the, the, the females actually, you know, produces the, the streamlets, uh, the streamlets generally in the first 14 days, they will actually surround the, uh, the, the calyx ball because that's their natural food. So that's the first, first thing that they, they actually go towards for. Um, and then, you know, then the whole entire process uh, breeds, uh, starts again. And, you know, uh, you know, having all these breeding cycles, I think that is, uh, to, to understand the, the breeding cycles, it encourages a lot of breeders to quickly, you know, quickly get the, the breeding uh, cycle to start. And then, you know, don't try not to, uh, you know, say, oh, it's okay, you know, let's, let's, let's wait and see, you know, eight months later and, and, and we are still waiting. And then the females may expire already. By then they will not be able to breed and then that's too late. So uh, I would really encourage, you know, you guys to actually uh, keep uh, pushing for the breeding cycles to, to happen uh, as best as you can. Of course, you know, not, not force, forcing them. There's no way you can actually force them. But do encourage them to, to have all the right parameters, uh, having water changes, having, you know, uh, the right temperature, having the biofilm in there. I think that will start to trigger them um, to breed. So that's all for sharing this video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please remember to give a thumbs up and please subscribe to this channel and until next time peace out